As time goes on, everyone is liable to be changed by it, including villains. Some villains become depowered or even die, only to return with a totally different look. Join me as we count down our top 10 Marvel villains you won't recognize anymore. Part 2. Number 10. Super Skrull Clurt might be recognizable when it comes to his character design, which admittedly has not changed that much over the years. But when it comes to his alignment, you might be somewhat surprised to learn where he is now, from where he started. Super Skrull Clurt made his first appearance in Fantastic Four issue 18. Once again, the Skrulls attempted to invade Earth and planned on defeating the FF, this time with their secret weapon the Super Skrull, who seemed to possess all of the Fantastic Four's powers. Unfortunately, Mr. Fantastic and the team realized that these powers were likely not Super Skrull's own, and suspected, in fact, that they were delivered to him from the Skrull homeworld. They used a device to jam the signal that was giving Clurt his powers, defeating him. Currently in the comics, Clurt serves Emperor Hulkling, and was for a time one of his trusted advisors. Clurt, however, was also the one who killed Hulkling's foster mother. Recently in Empire Aftermath, Clurt felt so awful about his past that he actually offered his life to the Emperor. Hulkling refused to accept it, though, instead preferring to make Clurt work in the area of diplomacy so that he might make amends for all the lives that he had taken in times of war. He was like, no. Instead, you gotta save lives, and hopefully that'll make up for it. You can't just die on me, Clurt. Number 9. Hell's Bells Hell's Bells was a group of villains who were all female mutants. The team was originally assembled by Cyber, who trained all of its members and consisted of Shrew, Briquette, Flame, Tremolo, and Vague. When Shrew betrayed them by testifying against them in order to get immunity for herself, the Hell's Bells banded together in an attempt to get revenge on her for betraying them. Eventually, they would be successfully taken into custody by X-Factor. Following the events of M-Day and Decimation, all team members save Briquette found themselves completely depowered. They still have operated as criminals in the comics, appearing in the Children of Adam series most recently, but they were a lot less scary because they had to rely on equipment and gadgets in place of, you know, their own powers. Even without their powers, the team mainly stuck together though, minus Briquette and obviously Shrew. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want even more lists about Marvel villains you might not recognize or something in that realm, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Silver Samurai. While Silver Samurai looks much the same in the comics as he always has, not every iteration of him has been mm, so recognizable. We've seen him turn up here and there on Krakoa recently, he seems to enjoy watching and participating in the friendly single combat matches in the quarry, and in modern comics, he's recognizable. But how about in modern film? Well, Silver Samurai might not be a main character in Fox's mutant universe, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. He actually made an appearance in the 2013 film, The Wolverine. But although here he also seemingly looked the same, when it came to his armor at least, he couldn't be further from his comic book counterpart in actuality. That's because Silver Samurai here was an adamantium robot whom Wolverine had to battle against. Yeah. Yeah, they made Kenny Yokio Harada robot armor. He was at least piloted by Ikiro Yoshida, who was obviously that film's version of Ken's own father in the comics. So, at least there was a little bit of a thing, but still, he wasn't even a person. He was just robot armor. Like, rude. <laughs> Ken is a whole person, okay? It's not just armor. Number seven, forearm. Forearm is Michael McCain. Originally, Michael was part of Strife's Mutant Liberation Front. He was one of the founding members, but would end up defeated by those that fought against him. Despite generally being on the side of the villains, Forearm was also welcomed onto the mutant island nation of Krakoa, where he could have a fresh start for himself. He accepted the offer and would end up joining S.W.O.R.D. and being seen as a member of Magic's Dark Riders, who I think should get their own book. However, on Krakoa, he looks a bit different from his initial appearance, where he decidedly was showing a lot more Forearm and had much less shirt. Forearm's mutant power is that he has four arms. Get it? Get it? his forearms. And now he wears shirts. Good for you, forearm. Good for you. Although you can also not wear a shirt. You can, you can not wear a shirt. If you don't want to wear a shirt, like, I'm not going to pressure anyone to wear shirts if they don't want to, or 
vice versa. I'm not gonna pressure anyone to like not wear a shirt. If they're like, I like my shirt, let me keep my shirt. But I do like his new design as well. His new outfit is pretty cool. Number six, Thanos. Thanos might look very similar to his initial appearance in the comics and also looks quite similar on the big screen, but he's seen a pretty big change when it comes to what he's up to recently. In the comics, that is. In the MCU, he's mainly dead and gone. But there is a chance, perhaps, that he could return? Who knows? Not only have we now met Star Fox or Eros in the MCU, but in the comics, Thanos has become the new Prime Eternal, and as such, their new leader. That's right, this guy just went from being the baddest supervillain around to leader of a superhero team. Although we'll have to see where the Eternals' alignment is in the comics, following the events of Avengers vs. X-Men vs. Eternals, Eternals War, because that's probably going to be crazy. Also, I don't even know what the Eternals is really doing in that mix, but I'm here for it. I'm here to check that out. Number five, Rhino. Rhino was given a completely new look for his appearance in the second Amazing Spider-Man film. Honestly, Rhino is a hard villain to do in live action, I feel like, so I'm not surprised with the direction that they went with, but also, what a weird direction to go in for that character, considering what they're actually supposed to be like in the comics. In the comics, Rhino is Alexei Sistovich, who is genetically altered and then bonded to a suit of armor that increases his strength and durability. Basically, he's given like a mechanical Rhino skin but like the skin. The armor was modeled after a rhinoceros as they are known in nature for being relentless when it comes to their assault and extremely hard to defeat due to their tough hide. Rhino, however, has never been known for being very smart, which makes him fairly easy to defeat usually, which seems to be the same idea when it came to his cinematic counterpart. However, the whole design for this character was definitely different than the comic book counterpart, whose armor was much less neck-like or robotic and is more like just the tough hide of a rhino. Really, he kind of just looks like a guy in a rhino suit in the comics. Also, Alexi is just super jacked in the comics, and his cinematic counterpart with didn't seem so Jack. He was just like a guy in a suit. Of course, Alexi does get a lot of his jackedness as well from his whole rhino thing, but he also, I think, was jacked still to begin with. I'm pretty sure. He's just more jacked. Number four, Legion. Legion has a new look in X-Men Onslaught Revelation. This one shot is kind of like the bookend for the Way of X limited series if you were checking that out, which I personally haven't read all of, but I will say the parts of it that I have read have been strictly excellent, so I would recommend Way of X to anyone that's interested. If you like the idea of pondering the why in life and beliefs, and you enjoy philosophical prose, this is really a great series for you. In Onslaught Revelation, Nightcrawler, Legion, Pixie, and Dust come together to try and defeat the resurrected Onslaught, who has been slowly returning with each resurrection, residing as pieces in the minds of all mutants. In order to help in the fight against Onslaught, Legion makes his mind a safe space for all mutants to come through, in essence also fully connecting with Krakoa and kind of becoming a sort of hive mind if necessary. As such, he gets a redesign, though he still gets to keep the wild shape of his hair that we've all come to recognize so well and that I've really come to love. Legion moving forward after the defeat of Onslaught will also keep this look as he becomes the newly created religion's church. That's right, Legion is the church. He's the building. In essence, people can come into his mind to worship, find community, and seek sanctuary. It's like a nice safe space for people to come and just like be and feel good. It's awesome. I love that Legion is the church. I just think that's great. Number three, Donald Blake. Donald Blake ended up becoming a villain recently in the comics, which is a pretty big change for a guy who was once also the mighty hero Thor. Donald Blake used to be Thor's human form, but in reality was kind of his own person, or he kind of ended up becoming his own person. He was created by Odin to be a human host for Thor, but after Thor died at the hands of the serpent, Blake became separated from Thor and became his own separate entity. Eventually, he would end up going to the Enchantress for help, only for her to use him to make her own villainous creature referred to as the keep. Basically, she she killed Donald Blake and then used his blood to make the keep and we haven't seen the keep in a while, but I'm sure he's out there somewhere. After Amora and the keep were defeated by Thor, Blake was laid to rest, living on as a disembodied head in a dream world that was crafted for him. 
Well, Living On is a person in the dream world, but he was just a disembodied head. But he was asleep, so he was dreaming. Eventually, though, Blake came to realize that this world wasn't real, and awoke from his dream, seeking revenge on all Thors across the multiverse for what had happened to him. And don't worry, he, he wasn't just a head then. He, he, got a, he had a body then. He would end up being defeated by 616 Thor in the end, and then made into the God of Lies, as per Thor's brother, Loki's suggestion. Thor was like, what do we do with this guy? We shouldn't kill this guy. He's Donald Blake. Loki's like, nah, let's make him the God of Lies. Seems to fit, considering everything Donald Blake has been through. Number two, Taskmaster. Taskmaster is Anthony Masters, and is known for being an unstoppable foe. He can master pretty much any skill he can observe. Some would say he's a taskmaster, which makes him a deadly opponent. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we were also introduced to Taskmaster, but the character was changed somewhat for the film in which they were introduced, Black Widow. Instead, Antonia Drakov, the daughter of General Drakov, the man behind the Red Room, was Taskmaster. When Black Widow left the Red Room and became an Avenger, she believed she had killed Drakov, sadly also having to kill his daughter, who basically led them to their target. She was a casualty of the explosion, intended to kill Drakov himself. Instead, Antonia was actually badly injured and ended up surviving, but her face was permanently scarred. She then became Drakov's weapon, having studied the moves of the Avengers and having their fighting styles basically uploaded into her brain, allowing her to mimic all their various moves and making her a hard opponent for Black Widow to defeat. Quite different from the comic book version, but still really cool and badass as an alternate version of the character, I think. Number one. Cyber. Cyber has come a long way when it comes to his look in the comics. Granted, Cyber has also come back a lot of times, so I guess it kind of makes sense that he would look different. He made his first appearance in Marvel Comics Presents in issue 85 in the 90s, where he was introduced to us as a cyborg appearing Wolverine villain who was hired by General Koi, another enemy of Logan's. Back then, he was just a smile and a coat with a hat on. Currently, however, his design is much different, and he doesn't even go by the name Cyber anymore, instead being known as Hornet in the comics in his newest body. Who are some villains that you hardly recognize anymore? What are some of your favorite villain redesigns in Marvel Comics, or in the MCU? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I am your host, Amanda McKnight. Till next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.